The place where foreign leaves have been accumulated is the place radioactive materials have been accumulated. こんにちは。
The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says the steel piling wall it built along the waterfront is reducing the amount of radioactive materials flowing into the ocean. Tokyo Electric Power Company engineers completed a 780-meter-long piling wall along an embankment in late October. It's 30 meters tall. The wall is designed to prevent contaminated groundwater at the plant from reaching the ocean. TEPCO officials measured the levels of radioactive substances in seawater along the embankment to determine the barrier's effects. They say earlier this month, the level of beta-ray emitting materials was measured at 32 becquerels per liter on average. That's down from 150 becquerels in mid-September. The level of radioactive cesium was reduced from 16 to 10 becquerels. And the level of radioactive strontium was 140 becquerels in mid-September, compared with just 1.9 shortly before the wall was completed. The operator says it will continue to monitor the levels of radioactivity near the embankment to confirm the effects Japanese of the Japanese officials wall. are struggling to find ways to handle contaminated waste from the nuclear disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. They are likely to postpone on-site surveys for radioactive waste disposal facilities at candidate sites in northeastern Japan. Well, Environment Ministry officials have been going to one of the three candidate sites in Miyagi Prefecture almost every day to start their survey, but local Local protesters have prevented them from entering the site. The town authorities decided to close the road to the site on Friday in advance of the snow season. The ministry officials wanted to start the survey by the end of the year. Contaminated soil and other debris is accumulating at several temporary sites. The government wants to set up disposal facilities in five prefectures near Fukushima, but it is facing strong local opposition. The ministry officials say the sites should have thorough safety measures in place, including roofs, concrete floors and walls to prevent any leakage of radioactive Here substances. Japan are honing their counterterrorism skills ahead of a string of international events. They held a drill in Tokyo Bay. They assumed a man with guns and explosives had got on board a cruise ship. The exercise involved about 80 people, police trained alongside staff from the company that operates the ship. Some tried to negotiate with the mock terrorist, but that was just a way to distract him. Officers snuck aboard and got the man from behind. Their team later disposed of his explosives. We want to work with the private sector to counter terrorism in any conceivable situation. Japan will host the G7 summit next year and the Olympics in 2020. The police chief in charge of today's drill says working with ship operators will be a vital aspect of security. Authorities in the southwestern prefecture of Kagoshima have distributed iodine tablets to people living near Japan's only online nuclear plant. Officials from the prefecture and Satsuma Sendai City handed out the tablets to about 100 people who had consulted doctors at the venue. The government established guidelines after the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident. These state that iodine tablets should be distributed to people living within five kilometers of a nuclear plant. Iodine helps to prevent the thyroid gland from absorbing radioactive substances in the event of a nuclear accident. But nearly 1,300 people living near the Sendai plant have still not collected their tablets. Prefectural and city officials have been receiving complaints from residents who don't fully understand how to use the iodine. In August, city officials began visiting the homes of people who had not picked up their tablets. Sunday's distribution was the first since the plant was put back online. The officials say they will work to ensure that everyone in the zone has supplies of the medication. 15,000 people are taking part in drills designed to handle a possible disaster at the Ikata nuclear plant in western Japan. Shikoku Electric Power Company could put one reactor back online as soon as March. This year's two-day drills began on Sunday. People and officials from more than 100 organizations in Ehime Prefecture took part. The exercises were held under a scenario where a major earthquake causes the plant's reactor cooling function to break down. Shikoku Electric tested a large pumping truck designed to pour water into a reactor containment vessels. <laughs> Thank you. 
Workers check the response procedure at the plant's new emergency office. Staff at a nursing home about 10 kilometers from the plant practiced evacuating elderly residents in wheelchairs. Workers took the part of those with physical disabilities. The prefecture and town hosting the Ikata plant last month gave the utility permission to put the number three reactor back online. Japanese government officials are considering approving as medical equipment a robotic suit that helps people with weak muscles. An expert panel of the health ministry is working on the project. People with eight diseases, including amyotropic lateral sclerosis or ALS, would be able to make use of the suits. Patients with rare intractable diseases who don't have other effective treatment options have high expectations for the suits. I asked my doctor about drugs, but I was told it's hopeless. I was disappointed. Isao Sato developed spinal and bulbar muscular atrophy about 20 years ago. He spends most of his time in a wheelchair. He wants to walk freely on his own two feet. When a handicapped person tries to move a leg, faint signals in the brain sent through nerves reach the muscles. A sensor in the suit detects the electrical signals in the skin and starts a motor. The motor moves the device to help the person walk. In clinical testing on 24 patients at nine hospitals, users were able to walk about 10 percent longer than they could without the suit. Sato realized the benefit by practicing wearing the suit. Experts say repeated use of the device will improve the walking capabilities of disabled people. The ministry plans to examine the suit's performance for five years to confirm its safety and effectiveness. The wearable medical robot would become the first to be approved in Japan. Japan's nuclear regulator says a new entity is needed to operate a troubled prototype reactor. The Nuclear Regulation Authority has called on the Science and Technology Ministry to find a replacement, the first recommendation of its kind. If a new operator cannot be found, the ministry may have to scrap the facility. The fate of the reactor is likely to have a significant impact on the country's nuclear policy. The Monju Fast Breeder Reactor is located in Suruga in Fukui Prefecture on the Japan seacoast. It was meant to play a key role in plans to recycle Japan's nuclear fuel. Spent nuclear fuel from conventional nuclear power plants contains plutonium, which can be used as fuel in the Monju reactor. And what's seemingly good about the design is that it can produce more plutonium than it consumes. The reactor runs on uranium-plutonium mixed oxide, or MOX fuel, which is created by reprocessing spent fuel from other reactors. More than $8 billion has been spent to create and operate the prototype. When trial operations started in 1994, it was hailed as an answer to the problem of what to do with spent fuel from other reactors. But a number of safety issues have cast a shadow over the project. In 1995, a leak of sodium used to cool the reactor led to operations being halted. It was later revealed that videotapes from immediately after the leak had been concealed to cover up the extent of the accident. The organization in charge of the facility at the time, Power Reactor and Nuclear Fuel Development Corporation, was the target of public criticism and is now defunct. After two shakeups, the Japan Atomic Energy Agency was put in charge of the reactor in 2005. In 2010, the first test runs in 14 years began. Three months later, a piece of equipment weighing over three tons fell into the reactor and couldn't be removed. Due to the seemingly endless problems, the reactor has never gone into full operation. On Friday, Nuclear Regulation Authority Chairman Shunichi Tanaka delivered the regulator's written recommendation to science and technology minister Hiroshi Hase. It urges the ministry to designate a new operator within six months. It says the Japan Atomic Energy Agency is unfit to operate the facility safely. This issue is closely related to the country's basic nuclear policy. So my ministry will work together with other government offices to decide how to respond to the recommendation.
Our core mission is to take all necessary measures to ensure safety, protect people's lives, and preserve the environment in a consistent manner, no matter who we are dealing with. The recommendation is not legally binding, but the Science and Technology Ministry may have to consider scrapping the prototype if a new operator is not found within six Government months. leaders in Finland are creating a place for nuclear waste to lie deep underground forever. They've given the green light to build the world's first permanent underground storage facility. They're hoping to make it operational as early as 2020. Officials say they've licensed a company to build a repository in a southwestern area called Okiluoto. Spent nuclear fuel in metal containers will be buried in bedrock 400 to 450 meters below the surface. Scientists say their radioactivity will take 100,000 years to fall to a level that won't affect living organisms. Finnish Economy Minister Oli Ren says a permanent repository is an important step in his country's responsible use of nuclear energy. He says final disposal of waste must be safe over the long Designers term. Designers of security technology are always looking for ways to stay ahead of those aiming to spread terror and suffering. This week, many are in Tokyo to show off innovations they say will keep people and businesses safe in the future. NHK World's Daisuke Azuma reports. The products on display here contain commercially sensitive technology, so all visitors have to pass through a strict security check as they enter. Representatives of about 130 companies are showcasing their technologies in the three-day event. Most of the visitors are from security companies. I came here to check the latest security products and gather information. Representatives from Japanese IT giant NEC are touting a system that can monitor bodies of water, where light and electrical waves have limited penetration. They say their equipment uses audio sensors, sensitive cameras, and other technology to track suspicious movements. People are aware of security risks in the ocean, but I think preparations to counter these risks are not progressing. Our solutions can be applied in a wide range of fields. This company in Kyoto sells security devices. It has developed a mist spraying machine as part of a security system. It blocks visibility of an intruder by spraying white mist without damaging computers and other machines. Once the mist is sprayed, it can block visibility for half an hour. Company officials say this product is becoming popular among banks and jewelry shops. We've been focusing on detecting intrusions as soon as possible, but now we want to develop products that can obstruct the activities of intruders. Officials from this company are selling a radar system that can detect drones. More and more people are embracing drones as a fun way to take photographs and panoramic video footage. But authorities say they pose a security threat. In April, a man landed a drone on the rooftop of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's office. The incident prompted the government to change the civil aviation law. This Japanese Asian company sells a drone detector made by an Israeli firm. It identifies flying objects using special radars and infrared sensors. They say the system is effective with a range of up to 5 kilometers. People in Japan have come to realize that drones could be used in crimes. Many security firms now are competing to enter Japan's new security market. People across Japan are looking ahead to major events such as the G7 summit next year and the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games in 2020. So, security authorities will be looking carefully at the latest anti-terrorism technology as they strive to keep the public safe. Daisuke Azuma, NHK World, Tokyo.